radiation. It is all around us, but around some of us more than others. And yes, it can drive you barking mad. Well, truth be told, those dogs bark like crazy anyway. And first of all, my humble thanks to Sir David Attenborough for leading us into this video. We are looking at uh, vintage uh, Zenith Sporto with uh, radium loomed dial and hands. And uh, we'll be talking quite a lot about uh, radioactivity and radiation in this uh, video. First of all, we can see that uh, the case has never been polished. It looks uh, very nice. It does have a few traces of its uh, previous owners in the form of some uh, DNA. So we'll have to clean that up. See the original brushing on the case back is still there. But uh, the dial and hands unsafe. So, we're going to pull out um, equipment to uh, shield ourselves. And what you hear in the background is uh, a fume extractor that I use uh, when working on uh, things that aren't so good for my health. And radium is uh, one of those things. The setup I use, uh, you can see here, I try to make sure that this uh, fume extractor uh, basically sucks up all uh, the gas that uh, develops uh, under the crystal and uh, radium watches and also any loose dust or uh, residue from, uh, from the loom. And as you might see as well, I also wear a gas mask for this. Once we get uh, all the hands off, we're going to put them aside. gonna deal with those later and we're also gonna blow off uh, with pressured air and the uh, residue that's uh, still on the dial before we can remove it now before I'm getting into this watch I wanted to give a very heartfelt uh, thanks to all my subscribers we uh, recently reached 10,000 while I was uh, out uh, with COVID well, that is just very humbling and thank you so much i suppose there is actually a market for uh, bad uh, dad jokes followed by the worst ones the movement is uh, the zenith 126 and as was uh, customary back then uh, zenith gold plated their uh, movements it's actually a pretty nifty uh, thing to do because uh, it's not very highly finished otherwise. But it looks great. But it does have some issues. You see the balance doesn't uh, oscillate. have to see why that is. And it's actually stuck in the bottom uh, pivot. So we gently ease it out. And it looks alright, so we'll have to look at the pivot and the pivot hole, obviously. The movement is uh, quite straightforward. It's just a three-hand uh, movement, so no date, no uh, other complications. But we see a lot of things are stuck, so it's been quite a while since anyone has uh, worked on this watch. And there's actually quite a lot of uh, old oil and grease underneath uh, some of these uh, parts as well.
This is a 15 joule movement. And what that in reality means is uh, that the center wheel is not jeweled. So it runs in the metal. So uh, we saw there's some play in the, the barrel. And there's also some play in the center wheel uh, bearings. So we're going to have to address that as well. And we see there's quite a lot of old uh, oil and gunk in these uh, various jewels, uh, which makes uh, the wheels uh, stick inside the holes. So we're going to dry off some of that old grease, but uh, there's more where it came from. And we have seen worse, haven't we? While we're doing this, let's uh, turn to the main uh, subject of this uh, video, which is uh, radioactivity or radiation. Radiation are the particles that uh, basically uh, are emitted during a radioactive uh, process. So anything that is uh, radioactive uh, will uh, give radiation. And it's generally in three different types. You have the alpha, beta and gamma. And in these COVID times, uh, people are more familiar with the Greek alphabet than ever before, I think. But that's basically A, B, C in the Greek alphabet. Now, of these three, the alpha is the most uh, dangerous one. But the particles from alpha are basically so big that uh, our skin, for instance, and clothes and so forth uh, will protect us. So it will not penetrate our skin. If we somehow ingest radioactive uh, material, however, we might literally be in for a world of pain. And uh, in watchmaking, um, of course, the stories of the radium girls is uh, pretty famous and well known. But it was actually quite common uh, during the Industrial Revolution that uh, workers were uh, subjected to dangerous uh, radiation. What you see in this picture here, for instance, is uh, the so-called fossi jaw from uh, a much, uh, much thick uh, worker that used uh, phosphorus for the matches. And when they get that vapor into uh, their lungs and in their mouths, you get alpha particles in the jaws that destroy the teeth and uh, the jaws. And that's the same thing that happened to the radium girls that worked on uh, luminescent uh, dials and hands. The radium girl stories uh, for us uh, interested in watches, uh, probably the most famous one. But it's also important to note that this happened uh, in the late 1920s. And radium was actually still permitted to use uh, in watches until uh, the mid 1950s. So it is worth uh, noting that uh, after the factory owners were forced to uh, start uh, implementing proper uh, working methods, there were no more severe accidents and uh, no more obvious deaths from radium loomed dials and hands. Now, while I'm talking about that, we managed to uh, take apart the whole movement. So we're going to put that into uh, the cleaning machine. I also wanted to show a little bit more of the details of the cleaning machine, how it works for those so inclined. The machine I have basically oscillates the basket very fast, short distance, first through a cleaning solution, then rinsing solution, and it spins off the solutions uh, in the meantime. All right, let's also have a look at uh, the case. Should we reuse this spring bar? Mm, probably not. Let's get most of the DNA off uh, the case. Case back looks uh, pretty good. We just need to clean it. The bezel has some dirt there and uh, pretty banged up crystals, so uh, let's replace that as well.
Now, getting back to our uh, discussion on uh, the dangers of radiation and uh, radium dials in that regard. The real danger of uh, radium dialed watches is for the watchmaker. It's for the person who uh, opens the watch up, who might ingest uh, dust particles or radon gas from under the dial. There is, of course, uh, some radiation uh, if you wear the watch. But that radiation is, in general, uh, not that bad. But let's look at some numbers while we enjoy this symphony of uh, ultrasonic. Mm. When talking about radiation, there are first of all a few different units that are in use. And they're uh, somewhat interchangeable. Uh, but uh, the most important one is uh, the sievert. Now the sievert is actually a really big unit. One sievert will be very dangerous to you. It will probably make you uh, develop cancer and you're gonna have nosebleeds and that kind of thing. 10 sieverts is a death sentence. So with that in mind, it should be logical that we don't measure radiation in sieverts. We measure it in micro sieverts normally, or even millisieverts. So looking back at the initial reading, that was about 4.7 microsievert per hour. That translates into uh, 41,102 microsievert per year, or 41.1 millisievert per year. We're going to see uh, shortly how much of that was in these uh, hands that we just uh, took the lume out of. But we're going to gently fold uh, the paper. And we're going to throw away that paper and, of course, uh, the finger cards as well. And the toothpick I used. We're not going to use that toothpick for toothpicking again. We're also going to gently uh, brush off uh, the rust on these hands. And we're going to relume them, of course. Not with radium. Now, getting back to radiation levels and what is safe for you, what you can expect and so forth. This is actually a little bit of a developing uh, subject. In general, you will uh, read or be told that uh, about 10 millisievert per year is uh, what uh, should be acceptable for uh, any person. Uh, we are living on a rock that floats through space and is bombarded by uh, radiation every day. That was the background radiation that you saw uh, initially before I even put the watch close to the Geiger counter. So there's always uh, some radiation hitting us and that's fine. That's just part of life. What is uh, funny, or perhaps not funny actually, is that uh, the term radiation worker, and mind you, these are normal people radiation workers can be subjected to higher levels and uh, the levels for the radiation workers uh, range from uh, about 20 millisievert per year to 100. the lower end of this uh, the 20 millisievert per year is uh, considered very safe and if you remember the calculation we just did this watch would have about 40 millisievert per year, so twice that. And uh, just a note as well, there is another unit called REM, also a big unit, so 100 millirem is the same as 1 millisievert. While we've been talking about that, we uh, got them to uh, loom the hands, and we are putting some uh, strong coffee on top to make sure they don't stand out too much uh, against uh, the old dial. We're uh, not going to take uh, the radium off the dial, and we'll see why in a short while. That can be done, but it's in general not necessary. So for now, uh, let's uh, leave the radiation discussion. Uh, we'll get back to it uh, towards the end of the video. But let's uh, put this uh, baby back together first. Remember the balance didn't oscillate. B 
because of old dirt but it looks pretty okay now Before we're putting uh, the escape wheel uh, and also the pad fork in, we're going to treat them with uh, Epilam Fixodrop, as uh, the product we use is called. We're uh, soaking the escape wheel and you can also soak uh, the capstones for instance. And then we're going to just dip the pallet stones into the Fixodrop. And then we're going to clean the pivots of uh, both of them. These old uh, watches, uh, typically with uh, small seconds, uh, then have an extended pivot on the fourth wheel. So we have to make sure we put that one in. And uh, if you remember, uh, there were some uh, problems in the train, so we're just going to check that uh, first. And it uh, runs uh, freely, so that's good to see. The two bigger problems, however, was that uh, this bridge is a bit worn, so we're going to have to uh, fix that. First for the barrel, and then for the center wheel. So the way we fix that is by making the hole smaller. And to make the hole smaller, we basically use uh, two domed uh, pieces of metal, one uh, punch and one stake. And then we let hell rain over that piece of metal. Like it's that boss you never liked who was treating you like shit, or your husband, or your wife, or your pet, or those pesky dogs that never stop barking regardless what you do. Well, actually the hammer is kind of small and made of plastic. Anyway, we uh, make it so that the hole is a little bit too small. And then we open it again with a smoothing brooch. Important to use the smoothing brooch. There also are uh, cutting brooches, but they would uh, be too rough. So with a smoothing brooch, you basically compress the hole so it also becomes a little bit stronger as a bearing. Might have to do that a couple of times before it fits. But then the slack has been taken out. And then we repeat that same process for the center hole. Just with the smaller domed uh, metal for the stake and the punch. Or the stake and the anvil rather. And yes, maybe we should have put the center wheel in before we put uh, the other wheels in, but uh, that's how we did it. Same procedure, we open the hole up a little bit again with uh, the smoothing brooch, till it's the right size. And you probably have to do that a couple of times as well. So I'm not showing that again, but it's the same process. Of course, newer movements uh, pretty much always have uh, 17 joules or more. And uh, those uh, two extra joules are then for uh, the center wheel. All right, we can uh, turn the watch over, put on the cannon pinion, and then uh, the keyless works. Quite straightforward on uh, this watch. Still, it's a very good movement, capable of uh, giving very good results over a very long time. I'm not sure how long uh, since uh, the mainspring broke and hence the watch stopped. But it might very well be that the watch stopped before that even, given uh, the very congealed uh, lubrication. But the mainspring was not the original one. So the watch has been serviced uh, before, but uh, definitely not many times. There is one marking inside the case pack. And uh, there have been some questions uh, in the comments 
about uh, exactly that uh, practice. And uh, in the old days, uh, it was customary for watchmakers to uh, leave a mark or make a mark rather inside the case pack. So typically initials and a date showing uh, who had serviced the watch. So that is obviously something that's completely unnecessary nowadays. And uh, if someone does that, you should basically be very unhappy. It's completely unnecessary. It's uh, deliberate damage of a watch. You can ask yourself, would you do that any other place? Would you uh, scribble things on the dial to say that you service the watch? No, you wouldn't. So why should it be more acceptable to do so in the case back? Exactly. So that's a practice uh, that really should be shunned and I honestly don't think many people do that anymore either. Thankfully. Alright, the last uh, few parts, put on the ratchet wheel and as we're tightening it uh, we give it a little bit extra so we can also see that the wheels spin freely. You will see in quite a few uh, Zenith watches that they use these uh, shims is uh, basically uh, washers or shims to uh, adjust the spacing. It's not really a pretty thing, but uh, that's how it is. And with the pellet fork in place, we're going to give it a little wind and then we can uh, oil the pellet stones. What we do is we use oil uh, on these old low beat movements. And we actually only uh, oil the, the exit pellet stone. And then we rub it along on the escape wheel teeth. There are 15 teeth on these old uh, movements. So if we oil every five tooth, then we oil it three times and that should uh, suffice. And it starts up very happily. It's always nice to see. Let's then uh, oil the pivots. We're going to use uh, D5 or HP1300 on the center wheel and uh, the third wheel. And then uh, maybe it's 9 to 10 on the rest. Before we put the watch on the time grapher, we always uh, demagnetize it. And then let's see how it runs. After a little bit of uh, adjustment, we see the watch runs uh, absolutely uh, nice. A little bit higher amplitude than we actually like with a vintage watch like this. But it's uh, probably going to drop a little bit over time, so uh, we'll be okay with that. We can put uh, the dial back on. And uh, I did measure the radiation uh, of the dial only, and it's, uh, it's not so bad. And in a second we'll see uh, the whole watch, how much it actually emits now. I think the dial uh, and the hands match pretty well. The hands look a little bit darker on camera than they do in real life, so... Uh, so that should be fine.
we're making sure that uh, the hands don't touch the dial that they don't touch each other and for a watch with a sub second uh, hand like this also very important that uh, the hour hand does not touch the second hand All right, time to case the watch. We're going to need to replace the crystal, so let's do that first. The way we do that is uh, to place the crystal itself over this little uh, anvil. And when we press the crystal down, it uh, bends a little bit around the edges and with a bezel underneath we can then press the bezel uh, up while we bend the crystal into the bezel you can also use a crystal lift that uh, works uh, perfectly fine as well Nap. What you might have noticed in the, in the beginning is that uh, this watch actually has this plastic cover. That is a dust cover, has nothing to do with uh, radiation, but it also then serves to uh, hold uh, the movement into the case. So the screws go uh, all the way into the case. See this beautifully perlarged uh, case back? After it's cleaned, it looks uh, very nice. In general, a watch uh, in very nice condition. Now, we had some fun before looking at uh, high beat watches and the second hand. Now, for a low beat watch like this, slowing the second hand down is just, you know, making it really slow. <laughs> so, it's not that much an effect. Let's uh, rather turn to uh, how radioactive the watch is now. We see uh, going from 4.7 down to 1.3. And that is of course mostly due to removing uh, the loom in the hands, but also uh, due to uh, letting out any radon gas that might have built up under the crystal. Now the main question that remains, is the watch safe? And the answer is a qualified yes. Most of us are most likely doing other things that are much worse to our health than wearing watch like this. And unless you wear it 24 seven and hold it close to your mouth while you sleep, it's uh, perfectly safe to wear it. I wouldn't wear it every day 24 seven, but uh, as a watch lover, we probably have a couple of other watches as well. And with a new strap on, I think it is a beautiful watch. Nice little piece of watch history. But it's now a lot safer to wear as well. Hope you liked this video. If you did, then uh, clicking like and subscribe will really help the channel. We'll be back uh, shortly. Until then. Ta-ta. <laughs>